So we want to talk about a binomial probability distribution. Lesson 7 says using the binomial theorem to calculate probabilities. And this to me also has kind of a high nerd, very cool concept in it. Objectives, it says, to identify the conditions of a binomial experiment and to develop the binomial probability distribution formula. And here's the question we're going to start out with. What's the probability of correctly guessing the outcome in exactly two out of three rolls of a die? We're going to do a three-level tree. I said I always do a tree for two levels. I sometimes do for three levels. More than that, we're going to try and see if we can spot a pattern, Amy, and come up with an equation or a formula or some kind of a shortcut. So we had students walk in late today. Let's suppose I was trying to guess their role on the dice of fate. What are the odds of me guessing correct? We'll use C for correct and not C for me not correct. What's the odds of me guessing correct? It's rolling a dice. What are the odds of you guessing the right number? One out of six. What's the odds of me being wrong? Five out of six. What about on the next roll? What are the odds of me being correct? Still one out of six. Five out of six. One out of six, five out of six. Are these two branches identical? That's how you know they're independent. What about the third row? You know what? Still one out of six, five out of six. Let's fill them in. So the question wants to know, what are the odds of me being correct in exactly two out of three? Down this branch, how many am I correct on? Three out of three, that's no good. How about this branch? Oh, this one is exactly two out of three. How about this branch? C, not C, C. Oh, this one is exactly two out of three. No, uh, yes, no, no, no. You know what? Those three branches that I put a check mark under, those are the only ones that have, have, have exactly two Cs and one not C. The probability of, oh, Vitaly, we're saying this, this branch, or this branch, or this branch. The probability of me being correct is exactly twice, one out of six times one out of six times five out of six, or one out of six times five out of six times 1 out of 6, or 5 out of 6, times 1 out of 6, times 1 out of 6. If I walk down that branch, that branch, or that branch. And here's what I noticed that's kind of nice. The same number appeared in all, the same three numbers appeared in all three terms. So as one shortcut, Amy, instead of typing this in three times, because each of these, because each of these has two one sixths and one five sixths, instead of typing them in three times, a simpler way would be to go uh, three times that. And there's also another shortcut. How many one sixths appear in both? I could go one sixth squared. 5 sixths to the 1. If I really wanted to type that in with as minimal amount of work as possible on my calculator, I think, Vitaly, what I've written here in black is this blue here. Simplify. Let's look for patterns. What were the odds of me guessing 1 correct? What do we say the odds were of me guessing correct? 1 out of 6. Do you see a 1 out of 6 in the equation? How many times did I want to be correct? How many times did I want to be correct? Twice? Do you see a 2 that appears anywhere in the equation near the odds of being correct, as it were? Ooh. What were the odds of me being wrong? How many times did I want to be wrong? Which is why I put the 1 there, Amy, so it would stand out. And what about this? Now, it comes from the fact that there's three paths, but what if I didn't have the three in front of me? This can be thought of as the product of 
the number of pathways that have two C's. It looks like if you look at each pathway, each pathway that I've colored in, each pathway that I've colored in, I think has two C's and one not C. I think that's a word. How many letters in that word grand total? Three? Choose. How many C's are there? Can you on your calculator try three choose two? Does three choose two work out to three? Because that would be a delightful and wonderful coincidence if it did. That Are you saying that this right here is really from three guesses, choose two correct? That's not a bad pattern. If the pattern is, how many times are you rolling the dice? Choose how many you want to get right times the odds of getting one right to the power of how many you want to get right times the odds of being wrong to the power of how many you want to get wrong. That's actually not a bad pattern. And that is the pattern. We call this a binomial probability distribution function. By the way, do you notice this looks a little bit like when we expanded binomials, where we had the two exponents adding to the number? And we this is very similar to that thing we do with the A's and the B's last unit. Turns out Pascal's triangle has a lot to do with this, too. What's the probability of correctly guessing the outcome in exactly two out of six? How many times are we rolling the dice grand total here, Jasmine? How many times are we rolling the dice grand total here? So how many times are we rolling the dice? No. How many times are we rolling the dice? Six. Six. Do I want to do a six-level tree? No. How many times do I want to be correct? Okay. So... It says, the probability tree method is tedious, but we can extend the ideas from here by saying this. And I'm just going to go straight down to the bottom here. The probability of exactly two correct guesses and six rolls. Jasmine, how many times am I rolling the dice grand total? Six times. Choose. How many do I want to get right? Two. That's the first part of the answer. What are the odds of being right once? How many do I want to get right? Two. What are the odds of being wrong once? Um, if I have two right, how many do I want to get wrong? Four. And that is the answer. Get out your calculators and go to town. Six. Choose two times one sixth to the power of two times five sixth to the power four. The odds of me being right twice, 0 0.2009. What would the odds of me being right all six times be? How would this equation change? It would be from six rolls, choose. 6 right, 1 6 to the, how many times do I want to be right? 6, 5 6 to the, by the way, what, do you think I'd be able to correctly guess the dice 6 times in a row? Is that likely or very, very unlikely? Exceedingly unlikely, that's scientific notation, so 10 to negative 5, point zero 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 two one four. What would happen most often if I roll the dice 6 times, and the odds are 1 in 6, on average, what would I usually get right, do you think, out of 6 guesses? Madison, once, probably, right? Because if the odds are 1 in 6, and I'm rolling 6 times, probably if I repeated this game over and over and over, the most common result would be getting 1 right. Oh, let's see if that gives me a slightly bigger answer than getting 2 right. 1, 5 wrong. Oh, yeah, about 40% of the time, I'll get one right. 
20% of the time, I'll get two right. Almost never, but not zero, will I get six right. This is also going to allow us, for example, to answer the question, what are the odds of getting 20 out of 40 on a multiple choice test? It's going to be the same math here. This is the binomial probability distribution. This is the long version, but this is on your formula sheet as the long version. Now your calculator actually has this built in in a very obscure location and I'll show you that in a little bit. But you do need to get comfy with the long version which actually isn't all that long, gotta be honest. Next page over. Okay. If I want to get X correct in six rolls, the pattern is from six rolls choose X correct 1 out of 6 to the x, 5 out of 6 to the, to the what? 6 minus x technically is what we were doing, right? If that's a 2, that's a 4. If that's a 3, that's a 3. If that's a 5, that's a 1. So, try finding the odds of getting three out of six correct on your own right now. We're not gonna do all of them. Try doing three out of six correct. I'm gonna freeze the screen. Let's see if we end up in the same place. I got that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? The odds of getting three, in, three out of six correct, not very good, which they, which they shouldn't be. Now, you cannot, you cannot use this for cards. Why can't you use this for cards? Because once you picked one card, what happens to the remaining odds? They have changed. So kids... For some reason, unless you put it back, which is boring, okay? Kids sometimes want to use this for cards. No, 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 you cannot. You can only use this if the odds never change. For example, Brett, suppose you shot free throws at 70% for the whole season. We could ask, in your next 10 shots, what are the odds you hit 7, right? 7 shots. What are the odds you hit 8? What are the odds you hit 9? What are the odds you hit 10? Or... What are the odds that you hit at least seven, which would be seven or eight or nine or 10? Very easy to calculate. And you can see where, oh, they might actually want some of this in sports. You could use a lot of the information. Batting averages is a great one as well. So if you know a guy's career or season batting average and you're towards the end of the year, what's the probability in the next five at bats, he goes two for five. Do you think managers could use that as part of their strategy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you, you're involved in baseball enough. You've noticed in the last 10 years, Stats have exploded in baseball, right? The whole saber, saber metrics or whatever they call it. Pardon me? Oh, yeah. Well, when I was young, all they ever talked about was batting average. Nobody cares about batting average anymore. What's the big stat? On base percentage and slugging percentage. And those only came around in about 1996 or 97. Well, nobody mentioned those before. Yeah. It's how, how well you hit the ball when there are people on base. Because if there are people on base, the defense plays you differently and you're pitched to differently. Of course you'll have a different batting average then than if the bases are empty. And so this is also challenging many long-held managers' beliefs. Have you read the book Moneyball? You want to read, because as a baseball guy and as someone who's got enough of a math background now, fascinating read. It's about the Oakland A's and how for years they were able to be very cheap but still compete with everybody because Billy Bean had found mathematical ways to find players that seemed worthless but actually know were worth much more than their current salary in terms of the stats that they would produce on average. He's the one who taught players that it's better to get walked than to hit a single. Anyways, overturning some very, very common beliefs. Uh, the sacrifice fly, I believe, is what they talk about. The sacrifice fly mathematically is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. If I recall the book, I'll have to double check. Now, 
What's the relationship between this and the binomial theorem? Can you see here if we expanded instead of gen a plus b to the sixth power, if we expanded p plus q to the sixth power, remember the pattern from last unit? It was six, choose, six, choose, six, choose, starting at six down to zero. And then it was a to the sixth, a to the fifth, a to the fourth, uh, b to the zero. Now take a look at the three that we did here. Six choose three, p to the one third, q to the one third. Doesn't it look an awful lot like what you have right here? Except instead of the letter p, it's a one sixth. And instead of the letter q, it's a five sixth. p is the probability of success, q is the probability of failure. And that's going to give us a generic approach. Example one. A biased coin is flipped four times. Now, the word biased for my ESL students, it means the coin is not balanced properly. This coin does not, Amrit, have the odds 50-50. What are the odds of getting heads here? It's a rigged coin. Okay? I did that because 50-50 gets really boring. So I said, I'll make up a biased coin. What are the odds of getting exactly four heads in four flips? So here's the notation that we're going to use. We're going to use the letter P for the probability of success. What are the odds of getting heads? 0.7. Got to go to a decimal now. We're going to use the letter Q as not P. And in fact, you're going to hear me sometimes say, mind your P's and Q's, which is an English expression. But here in math, it actually, me, be careful. What are the odds of not success? Did you, how'd you get that? So if you look on your formula sheet, you will actually see the formula Q equals 1 minus P. I trust you don't need to look that up. Hopefully I've emphasized the complement enough that it's now instinctive. The fact that they gave it to you almost embarrasses me. Oh, are you serious? So point three. If I want exactly four heads, how many times are we flipping a coin grand total? Four. It's going to be this. Four choose. Oh, and in the second question, how many times are we flipping a coin in total? It's also going to be four choose. We're going to do both of these simultaneously so we can see the difference. How many heads do I want to get here? How many heads do I want to get here? Two. What are the odds of getting a head? 0.7. What are the odds of getting a head? 0.7. How many heads do I want to get in this first question? Four. How many heads do I want to get here? Two. See how all the numbers are coming together? What are the odds of getting a tail? 0 0.3. 0 0.3. How many tails do I want up here? Zero. How many tails do I want here? Two. And I think if you type this first one in very carefully, you should be able to go second function enter and just change some numbers to get the second one. So let's type the first one in very carefully. Four, choose four. I know four choose four is one, but I want to type it this time, so I'll have to retype it next time. Times 0.7 to the power of four times 0.3 to the power of zero. The odds of getting four heads, not bad. 24%, basically. Would you bet on that? The odds are not 50-50 in your favor. No, that'd be a bad bet. Is it 0 0.2401? You guys got that as well? What are the odds of getting exactly two? Second function, enter. Instead of a four, two correct. Two correct, which also implies two wrong. By the way, this should be pretty good odds because the odds are better than 50-50 that you get ahead every time. So getting half of them heads should be better than 50-50. Oh, what? Huh? This is actually saying exactly two, not two or more, exactly two. The odds of getting exactly two, the best of all, but still not 50-50 yet. Point two six four. Six. 
the last one. What are the odds of at least three? Now, what does at least three mean? This means three or four. Let's write out the equation for three. Four heads choose, sorry, four flips choose three. Point seven is one head, three of those. Point three is a tail, one of those. Or, did we already do four in the very first example on this page? I'm just going to drop the point two, four, oh, one down, because for Pete's sakes, let's use our brains. Second function, enter. Three. Three. One. Point four one one six. Almost a 50-50 chance of getting three heads. Point four one one six plus point two four oh one. What are the odds of getting three or more? At least three. What do you get? Point six five one seven. Would you take that bet? Yes, absolutely. It's in my favor. Totally. Totally. Okay. A fair coin. Hey, what are the odds for a fair coin? Okay, let's put in the margin here. P is 0 0.5. Q is 0 0.5. Uh, by the way, apparently, actually, not quite true. Just the way they mill the coins, one of the sides is slightly, 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 slightly heavier. But we're going to pretend that it's true. Okay. I don't know, but they actually, uh, the NFL made a big stink about that. Why are coin tosses important in the NFL? It, not kickoffs. That's big deal. Overtime, and there's... There's huge stats that show whoever gets the ball first in overtime wins like 60% of the time. That's a big deal. And so the NFL raised a big stink about their specially minted made-for-TV coins. How do we know these are properly balanced? Because this guy wrote a paper and showed that regular coins are proper, aren't properly balanced. Now, it's like to the fifth decimal place. It hardly makes a difference, but they made us think about it. Look, two years ago. Yeah. What's the equation here going to be? How many flips grand total? 12, choose, how many heads? Six, odds of getting a head? 0.5, how many heads? Six, odds of getting tails? 0.5, how many tails? Six, Amrit, this is why I gave you a biased coin for the previous question, because the 0.5s there are kind of boring. The same number it confuses kids, but for a real coin, it is the same number. What do you get? What do you get? David? 0.2256. Anybody else? Yes? Okay. So are you all okay with the long way? Look on the inside cover of your workbook. See if you can find the algebraic version of this equation in the probability section. I think it goes n choose x, p to the x, q to the n minus x. Is that correct? See it there? Inside cover? Right? Okay. So it's there. You don't have to memorize it, but you need to know what all those things mean. I kind of find it easier to memorize it. Jordan, this is the long way. Your calculator actually has these built in. Next page. 
Uh, I'm skipping a few of these. I think you have to kind of hang of it. Next page. Here is the more interesting question. Tests that are multiple choice. Because if your multiple choice test has four answers for each question, hey, those are independent. The odds never change. It's 0.25 on every question, is it not? So now we can start to say, hey, what are the odds of getting uh, 5 out of 10 on a test? Or on a provincial, 20 out of 40? But that says exactly 20 out of 40. What we really want to know is 20 or 21 or 22 or 20, uh, passing, which is 20 or more. Okay? Pretty good. I don't know how you knew I told her to elbow you, but your head came up right away. Okay? We're going to do these questions two ways. We're going to do it the long way, and then I'm going to show you your calculator's built-in function. You are allowed to do both, but if you use your calculator's built-in function and it's a written question, you have to show me what you've typed in. So a multiple choice test has how many questions? Jasmine, how many questions? 10. How many rolls of dice? 10. How many flip? 10. So it's going to be 10 choose, right? How many correct how many wins, how many heads, how many successes do we want in part A? Two. Now, in this question, what's P, the probability of randomly guessing right on a question? Or point 0.2, but your calculator will let you put a fraction there. What's Q? Four-fifths, right, complement. And I'm going to add some more notation, by the way. N is the number of trials. What's N here? Ten. If we do this the long way, we would go one-fifth to the, how many right? Two. Four-fifths to the, how many wrong? Eight. What are the odds if you randomly guess of getting exactly two right. And give it to me to four decimal places, please. What do you get? Oh, someone just started. Point three oh one nine, anybody else? Yes? That should be the most common one. If you got a one in five chance of guessing, you should get about one fifth of the questions right, and one fifth of ten is two. Okay. Draw the line. Put your pencils down and look up. Get your calculators in front of you. Okay. We call this the binomial probability distribution. I'm going to say it again. We call this the binomial probability distribution. And would you believe if you look very closely on your calculator, you'll see in yellow a distribution button. Can you find it? Right here. Look up. If you all go right now, second function, vars. These are all different probability distributions. We don't look at all of these in Math 12. In fact, you don't look at any of these in Math 12 except for one. If you go down arrow, down arrow, down it, down it, stop when you think you've reached the binomial probability distribution function. Oh, option zero. Binome PDF, which is how I'll always say it, that stands for, pardon me? You didn't go second function vars. You just hit vars. The distribution feature is in yellow, Dina. You've got to go. Oh, yours is on letter A? Okay, you got an extra one. Whatever. Uh, make sure you're not binome CDF. Make sure you're binome PDF. Okay? Look up. Jen, you found it? 
Second function, vars. Down, 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 down for a while until you see binome PDF. Look up. Thank you. Second function, vars. Second function, this. Okay. Down, 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 down. Got it? Okay. Press enter to activate it. Okay. Here is the syntax. The first thing you type, and we're going to write this down, but I'm just going to do it with you. The first thing you type is how many trials, how many rolls of the dice, in this case, how many questions. Then you have to find comma. Your comma is right here next to your bracket. Yes, you're finally going to use it. Comma. The next thing you type is the odds of success. What were the odds of guessing one question right? One fifth, comma. The last thing you type is how many you wanted to get right. How many did we want to get right? Two, close bracket. And if you hit enter, you should get the same answer as we got long way. Except apparently someone didn't round off properly when they gave me this answer. They should have said, 0 0.3020. Yes? So I'm going to fix it here because I can't stand it when we round off wrong. And here's what we're going to write over here. If you did it this way, here's what I would ask you to write. Binome PDF bracket 10 comma 1 fifth comma 2. We're going to write the syntax out in our notes a bit later. Right now, I'm just showing it to you. We will actually write all this down. Okay? So, we're going to come back to B in a second. We're going to come back to B in a second. Instead, cross out C, and just underneath it, write... Getting perfect. What are the odds of getting perfect on this test by randomly guessing? And again, we're going to write it both ways. It would be from 10 questions, choose. How many right do you want to get? 10. One fifth is the odds of getting one right. How many right do we want to get? 10. Four fifths is the odds of getting it wrong. How many wrong do we want to get? Don't reach for your calculator. That's too much typing. I'm going to suggest, and I'm good with you, learning to do it this way as well. It's going to be binome PDF. How many questions are there grand total? 10. What are the odds of getting one right? One out of five or point two. How many right do we want to get? See, I think this is way faster to type, especially if you've just finished typing a binome PDF and couldn't go a second function enter and just change the 2 to a 10. What are the odds of getting perfect? Basically 0. 0. 0. 0.0000, well, let's write it down, 1.024 times 10 to negative 7. 1.024 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay. Let's go back to Brett. Let's suppose Brett's shooting three pointers. Why did you guys duck? Uh, let's suppose Brett's shooting three pointers. Okay. And let's suppose the probability of Brett hitting a three pointer is 0.3. What are the odds in your next 20 shots you go 15 for 20? It would be binome PDF, 20 shots, 0.3, hit 15. Not very high, not likely. Pretty small. Right, you only got a 30% chance of hitting one. Going 75% right, hitting 30, you know, with only a 30% chance on each one, not likely. Okay. 
Uh, but free throws. Let's suppose your free throw percentage is, uh, I think Spencer last year was 0.7. What are the odds of him going 15 for 20 over two games from the foul line? Not bad. Oh, no, that's exactly 15 for 20. What we would like to know is, what are the odds of him going at least 15 for 20? Which means 15 or, 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 or. What does or mean? Oh, there's got to be a better way to do that. And there, there is. Your calculator does have methods whereby you can enter more than one piece of data. Okay? We're going to do that in just a second. But there's the binome PDF. Useful just on its own, to be quite honest. But... We can do more. So, in the bottom of the page, here's the formula on your formula sheet. Or, binome PDF of n, p, x is the syntax. And, well, it has it right here. X is the number of successes. N is the number of trials. P is the probability of success on a single trial. I am good with either of those. It's worth learning both, but once you've mastered the first one, the calculator is way handier. Way handier. And you can do some nerdly cool questions. Can you turn in your workbook, please? Two, and we're going to have to skip a long ways as it oh, turns out, Mr. Duick. <laughs> yeah. Give me a moment here. Print those math 12. Copy. Cut myself off guard here a tiny bit. Paste. Forgot to print one set of questions, I think. Let's see if they're here. Yeah, they are. If you can turn, please, to page 489. Page 489. Page 489. For some reason, this textbook puts the binomial probability distribution in a completely different topic. Don't know why, but it does. Delete all ink. Come on. Just have patience. Come, computer. Not responding, I know. You'll get the hang of it. Good. Delete all the ink. Come on. Okay, we're back. So on page 489, folks, quiet, please. Page 489, you can, again, do your standard, uh, hey, box. It's on the formula sheet. And let's do example three together. Okay? Example three. So here's some nice applications. Psst. Thank you. Here's some nice applications, example three. 20% of patients taking a certain migraine drug suffer side effects. If the drug is given to eight patients, what's the probability that at most, let's all underline the word at most, at most two suffer side effects to the nearest thousand. How many patients are there grand total? Eight. Tree? No. Do the odds change? No. If the odds changed like cards, this would be bucket. Side effects others. This is not bucket. This is going to be how many patients grand total? Eight. What's the probability that one patient has side effects? Point two. 
How many patients do we want to have side effects? Well, none. But how many patients does this question want to have side effects? Two? So you can either go eight choose two, point two to the, I'm going to use binome PDF of eight comma point two comma two. What are the odds? Oh, wait a minute. That's at most two. What does at most two include? Two or one or? So here's two. Underneath that, there's going to be And underneath that, there's going to be Now we should be able to type this in our calculator pretty quick. Just type the first line and go second function, enter, change the 2 to a 1, enter, change the 2 to a, a 1 to a 0, enter. The handwriting is the really long part. Let's try it. Where was binome PDF? Do you remember? It's a distribution, second function, vars. Down, 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 down. 8, comma, point 0.2, comma, 2. 0.2936 rounded off properly. Second function, enter. For 1.3355. Second function, enter. For 0 0.1678. What's the total? What are the odds that two or less will have side effects? Amy? 0.7969? Do you think a research drug company might be interested in Yeah, they, they might want to know because side effects may mean future lawsuits. You could actually budget how much do we need to ch charge for this drug because every drug has side effects. There's no such thing as a perfect drug, but some drugs save more lives than they kill. Sad, but true. Okay? No, seriously. So you may be as a drug company saying, look, I know people from this rare, obscure, horrible side effect. Some people might die, but I also know 50 million people are going to live, but we're going to get sued. How much do we need to charge for this drug so that we can cover the lawsuit? We could use that to figure out the likelihood of it occurring. Right? Pardon me? Oh, yeah. The, the, the money behind, behind patent drugs is stunning in the billions, in the trillions, in the trillions. Turn the page. Page 490. Page 490. By the way, I'm going to go right to the tone. Your homework today is going to be none because I don't think many of you do the combinatorics homework. Your homework is going to be the combinatoric stuff that I assigned at the very, very beginning of this. Okay. Here is your uh, calculator. Okay, so I said we would have this in our notes somewhere. There it is. Now, do you see how we did 2 or 1 or 0? There's a better way. If you want to enter more than one value for x, we want it to enter 0 or 1 or 2. Put those funky brackets. Let's go back. And apparently, Amy, we could have done this. Second function, enter. Now, where are those curly brackets? Can you find those in yellow somewhere? Uh, you know what? Shift normal bracket, isn't it? Second function, normal bracket. And if I go 0 or 1 or 2, second function, curly bracket, and then close off the main bracket. That gives us the first value, 0. The second value, the third value, right there. I don't know. What did I say? The second function, regular bracket.
Now, what if you want to add those up? Read what it says here. If you want to add them up, use the sum answer. So we're using obscure stuff on our calculator command. To find the sum answer command, use second stat. Let's see. Second function. Where's stat? Right there. Second function stat. And if you scroll over to math, option number on mine, five, sum of all of the previous answers, add them up. And Amy, there's the point seven nine six nine that you gave us. Now, do you have to do it that way? You can survive by writing out the answers and adding them up. Brendan, it works just fine to do it this way. But am I a techie nerd? Will I show you how the tech works? Yep. Okay. There is one more shortcut. I'll show you that next class. Next class is going to be about a 20-minute lesson, a few more examples like this. Next class is going to be uh, work on the Binome PDF homework. And then Tuesday, big take-home quiz. I don't see you. No, I do see you Thursday. Friday is a pro D day. And your probability test will be the week after. We're in the home stretch.